to engage in buying land that they have not received a proper certification in terms of searches and record checks by the land registries. Having said that, I have also told the government officers managing our registries that they will take personal responsibilities. And we have so far, Honorable Speaker, taken, I think, three or four. Two are under suspension since I came in, and the two are already facing court charges because of uh, irregular uh, recording or documentation of land. Honorable, it's, it's quite a... It's quite a task. The answer will be technology, use of technology and digitization. And therefore, Honorable Senator, I, th I believe as a country, that is something we must aspire and that's what we should be looking forward to. I should be made, uh, put to task to be able during my tenure to complete digitization. We have two types of spatial planning the county spatial planning and the national uh, spatial planning. The national spatial planning is, is, is basically complete. The challenge we are having is the county spatial planning. And uh, the governors have not taken up this without appearing to accuse the counties. Uh, they have a challenge. Very few have taken up. I think I, I, if, I, if I'm correct, about 10 counties are on course. The others are not on course. It's a very important aspect to have spatial planning because if you don't, and then of course, if the spatial lack of planning is, a, is planning to fail. And therefore, I am also calling upon the counties to take up this task very seriously. We are in the process also of doing necessary geospatial surveys, uh, mapping and uh, georeferencing. This is an exercise that is going on, cadesta uh, preparations uh, for purposes of us to be able to digitize. We have to use those two things, the cadesta preparation and of course uh, georeferencing. Then we'll be able to resolve many disputes relating to even survey and, uh, and, and the boundaries. And, and therefore, I think we, we, this government will be on course. We, that's where we need to put our money into in terms of these questions and we, we will be able to deal with the lad grabbers maybe up to maybe eight, maybe a hundred percent if need be. I have no tolerance with them. Some of them have called me arrogant on a speaker, even if they are facing court cases for whatever. I know some of them are very unhappy, but some of them are also very influential, and therefore we need to just use our documentation properly so that we can keep away uh, people who want to, to steal both public land and private land. Thank you. Uh, thank you. That was uh, a long uh, number one question from Onyonka because it involved the three, three parts, political, social, and, the right, and then the question. Honorable Senators, we have four Senators on the queue and we didn't need to close with the, the CS for, for lands. I want to share maybe two, one and a half minutes each every member. And uh, Honorable CS, if you don't have the exact question, you can even go and give the, the answers later, later yes. so that we can uh, make some progress. So, Senator Vazishek. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, Honorable Speaker, I want to ask that uh, uh, CS, that uh, among the proposed units, which is actually under construction already, is Wajia. Wajia, I've, I've seen some houses under construction in Wajia Township. So may I know how many units is being built in Wajia Township? Uh, how many floors will those uh, houses go? Because Wajia has actually many challenges in terms of, you know, the solid structure and uh, sanitation problems and sewage because of the, the, the high level of water, uh, Wajia is still experiencing sewage problems. So I don't know whether the project has considered all those factors uh, which have been undertaken now because sewage problem, Wajia has no sewage. It has sewage problems, it has water problem, uh, and the, the solid structure actually is, you know, sandy. And uh, if you will be building, you know, houses with 
high, 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 high rise houses, uh, you might uh, experience some challenges. So I wanted to know how many there are, what is actually the height of this, how many, how many flows, and whether you have taken care of any consideration of uh, the sewage systems and all these things that are not existing or now. Uh, the Wajia. Wajia, we have 220 units that are coming up, 220 units uh, of different uh, categories. The original design was, is for social, affordable, and a few market uh, units, and therefore it, that one is on course. Uh, let me say that uh, for purposes of this house, that we shall have county projects at county level, but we shall also have constituency level projects. This Wajia is one of the constituency level, I say constituency because we are also using constituency as a unit to ensure equita equitable distribution of this project because they, for us they mean a lot, for the people of Kenya they mean a lot because they mean employment, they mean economic uh, sparring, and they mean a lot of economic activities around the projects, including employing the youths. Single project like this one will have between 300 and 400 uh, youths, uh, not, with, uh, not forgetting the other uh, issues that arise, you know, people working, the shops around, receive this money, you know, it's, it's not a bad project. So every constituency will have, and we will endeavor to do that in the course of our term, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Senator Delito John. Can you? One minute. Uh, th thank, you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, for me, I want to congratulate the Minister and uh, to ask her, apart from the creations that were mentioned by Chute concerning the rural affordable housing, for that to be very effective, uh, Mr. Speaker, we need to ensure that we have, uh, we provide land ownership documents to the owners of the land. I just wanted to know what is she doing, uh, and especially to the people living in the slums, because they're the people who need even those homes more than the other people. Mr. Speaker, you come to places like Laikipia, you go to a village called Maina Village, they don't have uh, title deeds. You go to a place like Rikie, Majengo, they don't have their title deeds, Mr. Speaker. I just wanted to know, uh, apart from the those villages in Laikipia, what is she doing concerning the land ownership, for especially those people living in the villages and in rural areas, Mr. Speaker? Thank you. Madam CS. Uh, when you say villages, Honorable Senator, I, if you mean colonial villages, I had uh, already answered that question and said that uh, during my tenure, I'm going to finish titling for all the colonial villages. Now, uh, villages like, uh, or areas like um, Kwa Maina or Maina, I know where it is, and there are many like that where titling is a problem because most of the times the land does not, indeed the land does not belong to the people living there. There are parcels of, uh, there, there are parcels of lands or land just given to them either by the chiefs or by people who just come and grab and they start issuing titles uh, in, in, in wherever they find empty land. It is not easy to first issue titles because any titles do follow planning. And uh, the way most of those houses are built, you'll find that uh, even planning for roads, for sewerage purposes or facilities, becomes very complicated. But I know, I'm aware that minor, minor area of, uh, between Nyandarwa, is, is it Nyandarwa or is it in Laikipia? It's in Laikipia. It's, uh, we have been asked to do titling and we are looking at it. We honorable senator, I can give you details of whether that will be done. And it's, it's quite a task, but we will endeavor to see because also the cases of how small can you go in terms of the parcel of land also becomes a big challenge. Some people have own places that are not even 0 0.000 something, and therefore you can imagine that it is not an easy task. But 
we, and policy, I'm coming back to this house before June with the national land policy. Uh, so I think I have answered that question. Yeah, sure. In terms of regulations, you can help us to think through because we will be coming to you. I, Honorable Speaker, I did not answer the question on water and sanitation and sewerage by Honorable Senator for, for Wajia, but he knows that uh, that issues of sewerage, where, where we build, Honorable Senator, where we have a project, we endeavor to provide necessary facilities working with other government agencies, whether it is water or sewerage, we will ensure, of course, there is connectivity. And if there is no sewerage, then we will be able to provide necessary uh, sewage system for that specific project. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Um, Senator Mohamed Faki. Honorable Speaker, one. my question is regard to the affordable housing. Uh, uh, there are members of uh, the civil service or public service who are staying in the uh, Botella estates in Nairobi, uh, Shaurimoyo, and uh, part of Jogorod, where they have been issued with notices to vacate uh, their houses for construction of new units. On the speaker, these units were constructed about 10 years ago during the Kibaki administration and they are fairly modern and uh, new uh, houses. And uh, I'm wondering why is the government demolishing such units at a time when people do not have houses? Thank you. Can I combine with the supplementary question from the Nairobi Senator? Maybe it might involve the same projects. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, when the CS appeared before us as the Housing Committee, we did uh, explain to her uh, our objections to the Housing Act and uh, explain to her that it was on principle. I'm sure she's aware that we in the minority are still going to ask the courts to have the last say, led by Senator Umtata. Mr. Speaker, the question that was raised by my colleague from uh, uh, Mombasa, Faki, in fact, the ministry has given uh, the residents of uh, Jogorod Phase 1 and 2 Jama, Botella, Ahero, and Mawenzi Gardens to vacate their houses uh, by the end of April. Of ne uh, uh, by the end of April, uh, that is 30th April 2024. And if you see the uh, the notice that has been sent to residents, uh, contains a clause here that says uh, that tenants will be accorded priority to purchase or rent a house once the redevelopment is complete. In addition to the uh, question that has been raised by Faki. Because, Mr. Speaker, if you see, I have a photo of those houses here. These are not houses that uh, you can compare to the houses, say, in uh, uh, Lumumba Estate that were built in the 50s. These houses are less than 10 years old. What rationale, what is the rationale of demolishing such houses to build something that will look exactly like this, Mr. Speaker? We believe it is a wastage of public resources. Number two, Mr. Speaker, can the CS confirm whether there are agreements that have been signed by this, uh, between the, the ministry and these residents that will guarantee them what the ministry is saying in this, uh, in this uh, notices. Because, Mr. Speaker, this was the same story in Baxter that the residents were told. When the houses were built, it became another story. And because we said we don't want another Baxter, I want the CS to assure me as the Senate of Nairobi that agreements have been signed with the current residents of these estates that they will actually be given first priority when the units are rebuilt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Uh, that's the last uh, supplementary question for the CA, to the CS uh, lands. So we'll summarize that uh, question, the two questions from the two senators. Then, uh, we call it and day. I, I think the questions are basically the same. The two questions regarding uh, Shaurimoyo, Botera, the various estates that uh, we gave along Jogo Road that uh, we gave uh, notices for people to vacate. We have had, uh, we have been, because we also listen, as a government, as a ministry, we listen. And I know this question was raised by Honorable Senator for Nairobi when I appeared before them, before the passing of the housing levy bill. I believe he's now on board. If he's and uh, if he's not, I'm sure he'll soon be on board. I hope he'll be on board because this housing program is a useful 
project for the people of Kenya. I, I want to say that for the Botera Shaurimoyo, we are coming up with various projects there because the land is a lot and the number of people using those houses, and those houses, you agree with me, honorable senator, honorable members, through the speaker, that they are houses that uh, do not hold a total of maybe 3,000 or 2,000 people. But when you look at the entire land and what we can do with affordable housing, I think it would be in putting the land into better use because we also, as a ministry, manage Land, manage the land and the land use is under my docket. Therefore, we have agreed this Monday and also last week, my teams from the Ministry, uh, Department of uh, Housing, visited these places uh, and there is an agreement. I have been advised that they, the residents are now in agreement and we are extending the notice to October, November, depending on where we, October, November, and uh, we will, we have also agreed that we shall give them relocation, uh, we shall facilitate relocation as people affected by the project. It's a small amount of money and I believe uh, His Excellency has expressed himself on that. As a ministry, we do provide some little uh, amount of money for relocation, you can pay your rent, depending on the agreement in each particular place, between six months and one year, we are able to provide the rent for similar, or at least noting that many of them are even paying rent where they are, and they are able to tell us how much rent they are paying. So we give that for six months, and there is an agreement, and the notice will be extended, and uh, it will be in writing. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, thank you. I think Adam I've CS. answered the entire question. <coughs> yes. <clears throat> so that is the end of the question and answer session from the CS runs and housing. So thank you very much, Madam CS, for your very elaborate answers. And the member who is happy today is the Senator for Nairobi. He's a very happy man because of all his issues have been addressed professionally. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, we'll come back to the Senate any other time that uh, we request you to avail yourself. So, as and then, sir, thank you, good thank work you. that you are doing to the Kenyans. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Myself and my team. Yeah. Definitely. When I, when I refer to you, it's your entire team and the family. So, Honorable Senators, uh, we have now the CS for Energy, who is coming for the Senate. Maybe should be ushered in. He has two questions. <laughs> From the Senator for Murang uh, Kirinyaga, James Murango and the Senator for Malsabit County, Senator Mohamed Chute. So I don't know whether you still you have instructions. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, welcome uh, the uh, Energy CS. Uh, thank you for finding time to come before the Senate. Uh, you are a frequent visitor to the Senate, and uh, we really thank you that you have uh, time. You don't postpone when you ask to come. So that is a good indication that you are very ready to serve this country. So we go to the first question from the member for Kirinyaga County. Senator Mbugwa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to ask question number 007 on behalf of the distinguished senator for Kirinyaga, Senator James Murango. One. Is the cabinet secretary aware of the breakdown of over 15 government-owned power transformers in Kirinyaga County between March and September 2023? And if so, could the cabinet secretary explain the reasons behind, behind it? And two, could the cabinet secretary explain the inordinate delay in replacing defective pa power transformers in Kirogo, Maendeleo, and Liagishiru village, villages within Moya constituency, 
despite multiple requests for their replacement? And three, uh, could the uh, Cabinet Secretary explain what measures the government has put in place to ensure the timely repair or replacement of defective power transformers? Thank you, Speaker. Honorable Sias, uh, you may proceed to respond to the question by Senator from Uganda. Honorable uh, Speaker, uh, today, uh, members of the Senate, uh, good morning and happy to be here uh, this morning to respond to uh, the questions that have been raised. And like I, has been said, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, Speaker, I am a frequent member here. And uh, thank you. And uh, happy to engage to address some of the challenges as we look forward to uh, building our country together. Uh, First one, uh, Speaker, of following the letter dated February uh, 13th, uh, which was inviting us to come and respond to the uh, question which has been uh, articulated by the Honorable Member as to whether we are aware of the breakdown of over 15 government-owned power transformers in Kirinyaga County in the last six months and the reasons behind. Uh, and that, Chairman, I wish to note that uh, the above question had been, had, been, uh, had been asked under question number 059 on 4th October uh, 2023. Uh, honorable members, the ministry is aware, and these breakdowns uh, or the breakdown in those transformers have continuously been addressed through Kenya Power, replaced them once, reported. Breakdown of transformers has been experienced not only in Kirinyaga uh, County, but also in different counties. And they have been occasioned by incidences of vandalism of transformers and earthing insulations, illegal connections, which when they are done, without due respect to the capacities of those transformers do cause overloading and sometimes we lose transformers every so frequently because of those illegal connections and therefore overloading of the transformers. And uh, thirdly, the faults on the low voltage lines due to trees and uh, the challenge environmental issues uh, that happen and uh, causes breakdown sometimes from time to time. Uh, honorable members, to counter these incidences and improve on reliability of the grid, the government has put up the following measures. Continuous monitoring is done on the power network to ensure failed transformers are replaced in the shortest possible time. A listing of power installation as under critical infrastructure. As a result, there is a special police unit uh, called the Energy Police Unit that is now mandated to protect all energy infrastructure all the way from generation, transmission, to distribution. Um, honorable members, uh, let, let me just uh, give a small background of the challenge and why we are trying to play a catch-up uh, game in this area of transformers. Uh, we've had, like I mentioned, uh, and I'll mention in the next question, serious litigation on the procurement front. When power goes off and it's a transformer right now, it's expected that we should respond immediately because it's a critical uh, service supporting hospitals, supporting critical functions. And when we lose a transformer and we have a litigation on procurement of transformers, which you may be aware lasted for between two to three years, there was so much backlog and at one time, we had so many transformers paid for by customers, up to 951. And uh, we were not able to procure because uh, of those litigation issues. Transformers which were required for funded government uh, last mile schemes uh, of up to 561, which we were not able to procure. So we did create a backlog of up to 1,700 uh, transformers and creating a challenge on addressing some of these transformers. And that is why uh, 
uh, speaker, honorable members, we've had this transformer challenge that sometimes looks like, why don't we immediately bring in a replacement transformer uh, when there's been a breakdown? Um, so, but Chair, uh, Speaker, Honorable Members, we are on top of this, and um, we're trying to ensure that uh, the transformer challenge is addressed once for all, uh, so that we don't have these inordinate delays in replacing uh, defective transformers. Um, I don't know whether the, 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 the next question on the inordinate delay in replacing defective power transformers in Kirogo, Maendeleo, Rishicheru village within Moya constituency despite multiple requests for replacement has been put to the floor. Um, uh, unless Senator Mbugwa is with such details, which I believe you can respond to in your next question, which is supplementary to the earlier question. Otherwise, I believe, Honorable CS, the response you've just given is specific to the first uh, question. And if there is any supplementary, I believe the Honorable Senator will be able to inquire so that you can respond to it as well. Proceed, Senator Mbugwa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On the supplementary question, I would like the Cabinet Secretary to ensure the country and this House that we have enough transformers in the country. And two, I would want the Cabinet Secretary to assure this House that the, he, to, to tell this House what measures he's putting in place to ensure that the transformers which are coming in are not substandard. Thank you, Speaker. Honorable Sears. Um, uh, thank you again for that question. There is a current uh, procurement process going on for significant uh, number of transformers to address the shortfalls and to basically deal with the challenge that you raised in the first question and the second question. We've worked very closely and accompanying me to the house today is our principal secretary, Alex Washira, the CEO for Kenya Power, uh, Dr. Siror, engineer Siror, and the CEO for Ketraco, uh, Dr. John Mativo, also engineer John Mativo. And uh, I want to confirm, uh, honorable speaker, honorable members, that we really are looking at the quality of transformers. We are not only looking at that quality of transformers, we have made transformer requirements for procurement, uh, one that can be localized uh, to our market. And we've developed standards, worked with the international community to ensure that we are able to uh, manufacture, uh, more assemble the transformers in Kenya. And in this um, procurement circle that I mentioned, we are getting adequate transformers to address the challenge of shortage. Uh, Chair, we have addressed those quality challenges so that we do not see the challenge of our transformers failing. Uh, one of the assurances, uh, honorable members of assuring ourselves on quality is to be able to be given warranty. Warranty is a statement of quality, which basically means, honorable members, if there's a breakdown, you basically replace a transformer at no cost. And we've taken all those precautions to ensure that we protect uh, our investments, we protect our customers, we protect ourselves from downtime, which causes more losses by ensuring that we do procure uh, quality transformers, but transformers which are backed by warranty, uh, which is, like I said, a statement of quality. Uh, and that is to basically say, in the event that we lose a transformer, before the warranty period lapses, we are able to get replacement at no additional cost. So, Chair, we are on top of that, and uh, working together with my team, we will want to assure Kenyans uh, through this house that we will procure quality transformers and pitch for that warranty to confirm our quality and the failures that we've seen in the past. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Member. Thank you uh, very much, Honorable Sears. Uh, from my dashboard, Honorable Members, I have got a list of uh, 
eight members who I believe would want to ask supplementary questions to the CS. But when you look at the number of questions, the second question, question number 20, that is by Senator Chute, it is more or less related but nationwide covering. I therefore would direct that we allow the Honorable Senator Chute to ask that question. Thereupon, all supplementary questions by members can be asked for the CS to respond to all of them. Honorable Senator Chute, proceed to ask question number 20. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, question number 020. Question number one. Which entities were responsible for the disruption, disruptions of power supply in most parts of the country on Saturday, 11th November, 2023, and the nationwide power blackout that occurred on Friday, 25th August, 2023? And could the Cabinet Secretary state any actions taken against those entities? Question number two. Could the Cabinet Secretary provide a comprehensive report on the losses incurred by businesses because of the power disruptions while clarifying whether the affected businesses will be compensated? Question number three. What measures has the government put in place to ensure the stability of the national electricity grid to prevent the recurrence of such power disruption. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Senator Chuta. Honorable Sears, you may proceed to respond to the questions by Senator Chuta. Uh, thank you, uh, Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Chuta, for that question. That uh, uh, touches on the outage that was experienced and the disruption of power supply in most part of the country on that Saturday, 11th November 2023, and the nationwide blackout that occurred on August, Friday, 2023, and the actions we've taken against uh, the agencies. The status of investigation into the nationwide power outage on those two dates, uh, honorable members, um, let me respond that at the time when we experienced that national outage, the system demand at the time of that occurrence was way below the peak demand. There was enough power on the grid uh, as we were only taking in 1,855 megawatts uh, within the generation mix of hydro, which at that time was delivering 355 megawatts. Geothermal at that time was delivering 817 megawatts. Uh, thermal uh, the, was delivering 244 megawatts, wind was at 356 megawatts, and the import from, uh, we didn't have any import from Uganda, or we were feeding them some two megawatts, because we do a power exchange uh, with Uganda, and at this particular time, uh, we were pushing some two megawatts to Uganda, we were getting uh, 100 megawatts from Ethiopia. Uh, through the, uh, we call it EEP. The first event that related to the outage was recorded by our system at the National Control Center in Dandora, uh, the SCADA system, at 21 hours, 45 minutes, 0, 9 seconds, 187 milliseconds. Uh, I, I stress that, Chair, because we record events to the milliseconds or any occurrence because sometimes we want to see the sequence of events, what happened before which event. And that uh, outage was associated with dynamic, what we call dynamic reactive power compensation system at Lake Turkana, uh, wind power in Loyangalani. Uh, and the analysis of the event, honorable members, uh, revealed that the compensation unit was responding to a dip. The system seemed to have seen a dip of voltage. Though the dip occurred at almost the same time with a sub-transmission uh, line at Earth River, a 66 kV line at Earth River substation, 
uh, which was recorded at 21.4509.277. You will see that the deep um, honorable members occurred uh, about 100 milliseconds uh, later in our Earth River uh, substation. It is, however, unusual for such faults to affect the grid owing to the fact that the lines are the downstream, uh, the downstream uh, in terms of um, being the, la the last mile side of our consumption. And, and therefore, we do not expect uh, really uh, that unusual fault to affect the grid owing to the fact that the line are, like I said, the downstream of the grid and the resultant impact on the transmission grid should be minimal. Examination of the wave, the wave, the waveforms and the events in the SCADA system shows that Lecturcana wind pro power, uh, project or power project uh, uh, power plant uh, tripped in 140 milliseconds when the voltage dip was slightly above 80% 80, 80 of the normal 220. system uh, to hold for at least two seconds uh, for a fault through, uh, for a fault right through. The fault can really be allowed to go through if the system was to hold for two seconds. But uh, this reactive power reacted and in less than 187 milliseconds, 140 milliseconds, um, the system shut down. So that really caused a challenge uh, which uh, cascaded down and uh, ran us into that challenge and that problem. On the 11th of November, 23, Kenya Transmission National Grid uh, has installed interconnect generation capacity of, uh, with an installed capacity generation of 2806 megawatts with your thermal at that time, 852, hydros 810, uh, thermal 506, wind 426 megawatts, solar 212 megawatts. Uh, the national grid is interconnected with Uganda uh, through a 132 kV double circuit line between Lesos and Tororo substation and Ethiopia electric power through a 500 kV uh, high voltage uh, DC line uh, linked at Suswa, to linking Suswa. On that particular day, this is the second uh, uh, partial blackout on the 11th November 2023 at 19 hours 57 uh, minutes, the country experienced a partial uh, outage of the electric power system. The system demand before the outage again was approximately 22,057 megawatts distributed as shown on the table on the statement which I've signed and uh, given to the house. Hydros 553, geothermal 800 megawatts, thermal 234, wind 334, imports 136, totaling 2057 megawatts. You will note again, honorable members, that that was way below the generation capacity of the country or the peak power that we have seen before. So it was nothing to do with the shortage of, of uh, power generation. The power supply disturbance was triggered by a trip on an 80 megawatt, uh, a 90 megawatt transformers at Olkaria 2 and Olkaria 1, Olkaria 1 additional unit substations. Olkaria Naivasha 132 line, honorable members, also tripped at the same time. The cost was attributed to a failed champa cable at Olkaria 1, 132 uh, kilovolt substation. The substation was commissioned in 1992 and reconstruction work in addition to upgrading of the generator uh, is due to commence uh, this year. The loss of the 170 megawatts and Naivasha 132 kilovolts line resulted in increased power flow from Olkaria uh, to Kibos 220 uh, kV line and Suswa, Nairobi North 220 kV line. The shift in the power flows due to that caused an overload in one of the very weak links we have in the west of Kenya, Kisumu Moroni, which is the very reason why we are accelerating the construction of Narok Bomet. So Kisumu Moroni 132 KV line and the two 
200 megawatt transformers in that, at Dandora 220 substation. Kisumu Moron 132 line then tripped on an overload further, overloading the transformers at Dandora, which tripped. With a trip of these critical lines and cascade trip of Chuja, Naivasha, Kibos, Kisumu uh, 132 to Moroni, the western part of the country was kind of isolated. It was islanded. And, uh, and, um, and uh, we then uh, saw that, that partial uh, challenge. Um, this led to several imbalances in the system. When this thing, the system tried to balance itself, and in a very short time, that imbalance uh, really, uh, in terms of the cascading of the uh, challenges, uh, caused that, that challenge of partial, partial outage. Uh, like I said, this led to several imbalances in the system, leading to cascade trip of generators in Olkaria, Nairobi, caused uh, loss of Ethiopia transmission and Uganda imports. And the loss of generation led to that partial collapse of the system. However, Mount Kenya grid system was, uh, I landed with generators at Kamburu, the, the cascade, uh, and Gitaru, running and tied to the customers connected to this part of the, of the grid. You will not remember that because it was a partial uh, outage, we were able to restore within three and a half hours. And so the restoration activities began at 2011 hours on the same day, and supply to the customers was finally restored uh, fully by 139 hours in the morning with sufficient generations av availed. Members uh, honorable members, joint technical and operational teams in the energy sector have continuously reviewed such major disturbances with resultant improvements, recommendations, some of which have been implemented. These endeavors and efforts have continued to reduce the frequency and severity of system disturbance, especially those that would cascade and lead to nationwide grid collapse despite its vulnerability. System defense mechanisms such as effective under frequency load shading uh, are some of the uh, strategies we have employed today and provision of emergency overload capacity for critical transmission lines have been employed and are working well. And what you will possibly notice for a while, we have not seen uh, some of these uh, systems. What I'm basically saying here, when there is an overload, we'd rather pull down some of the feeders or deload a network and not push power and overload the system. Uh, that would cascade and cause a nationwide, nationwide or the kind of partial uh, blackout that we talked about. So what we do, honorable uh, speaker, and you'll possibly notice this more in the area of Bomet because of uh, Moroni Chemosit, when there is an overload in that line, because um, the li that line is built on a capacity of about 80 megawatts, 89 megawatts, and many times it would be carrying up to 120, 130 megawatts, Moroni Chemosit, down to Sotik, Gigathi, all the way to a window. Sometimes we have to deload the line by pulling some of the customers down uh, so that we don't overload the country. And so some of the uh, blackouts that you see sometimes is what we are calling here effective under frequency load shedding to manage uh, the capacity of the system so that in a way we are islanding, we are isolating the problem to that small area by bringing it down and therefore sustaining the rest of the country. However, the proposed key projects, are, uh, especially alternative transmission lines for evacuating power, from key generation points which are bending poses major challenge in operating the network optimally. Uh, comprehensive, we have attached comprehensive list of uh, recommended critical creed enhancement project, which are in various stages of implementation in the annex. Allow me, honorable members, at this point to point to the fact that whereas the energy sector in Kenya is almost fully unbundled to the extent that the generation, the transmission, and the off-taker operate independently uh, with their own balance sheet, with their own systems. Uh, Ketraco today is still supported on government balance sheet. And therefore, until, and we are working very quickly to employing the PPP framework to see how Ketraco 
with the limited government resources could be able to work through the PPP framework, attract private investors to build transmission system, remove the constraints on the overloaded um, uh, circuits, and be able to forestall this challenge. So a number of circuits today are undergoing evaluation through the PPP framework, and so that uh, Ketraco can, be, can leverage on private investment and be able to uh, forestall some of these challenges. Some of the action the ministry is addressing the root cause of grid instability is formulating lasting solution in order to comprehensively address the weaknesses. One of them is what I just mentioned uh, through the PPP framework. Further, the government together with our development partners are working on grid reinforcement plan to ensure the frequent blackout experience lately do not become a persistent matter. Government is committed, honorable members, a speaker, uh, in having a reliable, sustainable, and resilient national grid uh, system. And to an extent where, like I said, generation seems to be doing well, uh, the off-taking through KPLC and what we are doing to strengthen their balance sheet, you've lately realized that we have allowed KPLC uh, minority shareholders to participate in the structure of governance, corporate governance, by bringing in four independent directors uh, to represent the interest of the 49.9% shares which are uh, out through the Nairobi Stock Exchange. And the government side today is represented by five members. Th those are some of the reforms which we are working through in Kenya Power to address governance issues, address the power losses from the current 22% and we've given ourselves 16% in the next three years, address the issue of the balance sheet so that Kenya Power balance sheet can be strong enough to be able to go out there and do what they need to do for the country in assuring us of reliable, sustainable, resilient, uh, and the national uh, grid with respect to what I've said uh, in the PPP framework uh, so that we do not have to only come to the House or to Parliament to look for resources to build the infrastructure nationally. It can be built by the private sector and leverage on the electrons that flow on that network, the way we toll our road highways. We should be able to toll the lines and be able to uh, get return on investment uh, on the PPP framework. Speaker, honorable members, uh, thank you. Thank you, honorable Sias, for your very elaborate uh, response to the question by Senator Chute. Now, honorable members, I have got 11 requests on my dashboard. I believe these requests are with regard to supplementary questions. As I allow you, I would like to direct that we will limit uh, to, uh, now they are becoming 12, we will limit the amount of time each member will take to ask the question. And I would like to direct you to be guided by standing order 51C7 on supplementary questions. I will not hesitate to rule you out of order in the event of non-compliance with that uh, particular standing order. And for purposes of order, I will uh, limit each member to one question uh, within two minutes. Let's start with the majority leader, Senator Aaron. Thank you, uh, Ms. Senator Chute, what's your point of order? I have, a, Honorable Speaker, I have two supplementary questions. Very well. Yes. I'll allow you to go first because you asked the question. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to, first of all, thank the CS and the PS on behalf of the people of Marsabet. Honorable Speaker, uh, we visited uh, the CSS office some time back because of the problems we had of electricity in Marsabit. That problem has been solved through his efforts and the PS. I want to say thank you very much on behalf of our people. Honorable Speaker, uh, the question that I've asked is who foots the bill? Who is going to pay the cost, the business people, incurred and the damages. That is my uh, question. And also, uh, the other question, Honorable Speaker, is Kenjin is going to come to Marsbit 
very soon. And they have already started the public participation process. And uh, the CS is aware that we had an issue with electric wind power. And the issue is still before the court. Can the, PA, can the CS tell us what, what are we going to do, what is he going to do in regards to Kenjin going to Loyangalani for a supply of electricity? And finally, I want to ask the CS to tell us how far has he gone on the issue of uh, the line from Electrocano wind power going into Marsabit and Isiolo. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable CS proceeds to respond to that. Honorable CS, we are waiting on you to take uh, the microphone. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Speaker, and Honorable. The supplementary question from Honorable Chute, and thank you for the compliments. We are at your service, uh, Honorable Members. Uh, if there are issues that we can deal on one by one, we'll be happy to do so, um, because we have one goal, to build this country together. Um, Marsa, but let me, uh, let me answer the second question uh, on what we are doing, uh, or what Kenyan is doing to better service the Loyangalani. distribution of power, we recognize that we need to service these residents of this area. And there is a project which uh, Honorable Chuta may be aware about where we are connecting Loyongalani. We are building a high voltage line from Loyongalani to Marsabet and from Marsabet down to Siolo. Uh, when we came into office, uh, that project had been uh, processed uh, together with Kilgil, Mala, uh, Tika Mala, and a payment made uh, for the counterpart funding to support the, 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 foreign, the, foreign, the foreign side which was coming out of uh, China Exim. So a payment has been made. What we did immediately, because that payment was not enough, was to discope the two projects, the Loengalani, Marsabet, Isiolo, we discovered it from Gilgil, uh, Thika, Mala. Uh, and, and what that meant is we were able to then take Gilgil, Thika, Mala onto a PPP framework, the PPP I talked about, and it's advancing well. The Loengalani, Marsabet, Isiolo then remained with a payment which represents 15% of the payment which is required as a counterpart funding so that we can draw the Exim funds to be able to build that line. We are further discoping that project to ensure that as we build this line, we are able to step down from 400 to 132 and 66 and be able to service that community. And as we go to Siolo, we should be able also to step down from the 400 KV uh, through that discoping and ensuring that uh, we service the people of Isiolo, uh, Marsabit, as the line comes down. That is an, an advanced stage. The discoping work is going on through uh, China Exim. We, in principle, we are done on the Kenya part, and the payment has been made. So we should be seeing, as soon as we are done with our partners, uh, China Exim and the contractor, the line or the contractor going to site, because uh, payment has already been made uh, on the counterpart uh, Kenya, Kenya portion. And so as soon as we finish with China Exim, we should see not only the big lines being built, but the step down from those high voltages to the 
voltage that feeds the communities coming out and together with last mile for the first time we should see uh, Loengalani on grid, we should see Marsabit on grid coming down all the way to Isiola where we already have under the two line. Uh, so, uh, honorable members, we basically would be happy to really see that region on grid uh, on account of the fact that uh, Marsabit is very rich on wind resources, very rich on solar. And as we pull those resources to the significant industry or load centers, we will be servicing the communities, uh, cobbling with the last mile programs uh, where you fund us as parliament. Uh, regarding the first question on compensation, uh, when we have a major uh, blackout which impacts on the whole country, uh, the point would be to establish the cause and be able to really apportion the blame. Why? you had me reading up to the second, the millisecond, when the event occurred, is to find out whether did the in private investor power plant in Lecturkana go out first and cause the problem, or was the problem caused by the Juja 220, which came in 100 milliseconds later. So that work is going on, but again, honorable members, when we have a blackout, it is so significant in terms of losses for the country. And like I said, when we have a company like Kenya Power where we are trying to restructure its balance sheet to be able, you know Kenya Power pack stops all the IPPs in terms of uh, uh, the partial risk guarantees uh, that supports power generation for Kenya. And uh, unlike the banks, if one bank goes down, the other banks would be there. So we really need to take care of KPLC even as we go today to the from one market, uh, one market uh, a player to an open market where we will be allowing generators to generate power and wheel it uh, to market or to load centers using uh, the wheeling uh, policy, which is shortly being gazetted for purposes of allowing uh, multiple players in the industry. Because when I talked about a market which is unbundled, you should be able to generate your own power in a power plant and get Ketraco to wheel that power to market for you and sell that power to industry, wherever you want to sell in the country. And, and that then removes the Kenya power being required to reticulate or transmit and reticulate. So the unbundling is a significant aspect of what we've done in supporting uh, opening up the market so that we then move from a one market buyer where Kenya Power buys all the energy and distributes to an open market where anybody can generate, use Ketraco to wheel the power to market and sell that power to industry, wherever the industry is. Uh, a lot of work is still going on in this space of compensation and how much can we compensate when there is something like a national disaster or an, a major accident? Uh, but as regarding uh, challenges where uh, a cabling problem or a transformer caused a problem and Kenya power is culpable, then that doesn't present a problem in compensation and we do that from time to time. But when we have a national uh, challenge like when uh, the whole network goes out because of something that is almost close to a national disaster, it becomes a challenge to say who should compensate because we would certainly be closing down a company that uh, we need to support the rest of the economy. Uh, we need to pay attention to that compensation space, but compensation do happen in, 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 in where the faults are very specific and pertaining to what could have been avoidable uh, to the extent that uh, Kenya Power would then be able to compensate the affected uh, families or the affected businesses uh, to that extent. Uh, so we need to look at how do we then compensate when it is a national challenge, uh, which if costed, even the entire company could basically go under and, and therefore cause a problem for the entire country. Thank you, members. Thank you, Honda Basias. Uh, I will now allow members to ask the supplementary questions and I'll start with uh, Senator Mohamed Baku. Asante, uh, Mr. Speaker. Swali langu ni kuhusiana na kupotea kwa umeme katika kaunti ya Mombasa hususan 
wakati wa mwezi mtukufu wa Ramadhani. Mheshimiwa Speaker, imekuwa sasa ni jambo la kawaida umeme kupotea mara kwa mara katika kaunti ya Mombasa na maeneo ya karibu hususan wakati huu ambao tunafanya tunafanya ibada za usiku wakati wa mwezi mtukufu Ramadhani. Wengi wanashindwa kuhudhuria ibada hizo kwa sababu ya ukosefu wa umeme na vile vile pia ni kiusalama si rahisi mtu kutoka nyumbani ikiwa hakuna mataya barabarani ambayo yamezimika kwa sababu ya ukosefu wa umeme. Ye waziri ana mipango gani ya kuhakikisha kwamba kwa hizi siku 14 zilizobaki za mwezi mtukufu wa Ramadhani tutakuwa na umeme sio Mombasa peke yake Kenya nzima ili waislamu waweze kumuomba Mungu wao bila ya matatizo yote. Asante mheshimiwa speaker. Uh, Asante Senator Faki. Uh, Mombasa uh, county ni county moja ambayo umeme inayotumika hapo uh, utokana sana na generation wa uh, thermal that is where we have most of the thermal power plants the other generation ile tunaitumia sana Mombasa ni ile inatoka hapo Malindi uh, weru weru hapo nyuma kidogo we've got a, 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 a solar solar power plant uh, inamilikiwa na company moja inaitwa Cloblek uh, as an IPP and feeds 50 megawatts to the grid. Uh, pia Mombasa uh, ile moto mingi inapatikana Mombasa ni inatoka Olkaria. Pengine uh, the cascade ile line ya zamani ya Kamburu inayoenda Mombasa but majorly um, geothermal kutoka uh, Olkaria tusha jenga hiyo line 400 kV lakini currently we are operating at 220 kV na hapo Mariakani kuna station kubwa tutafungua hivi karibu pengine wiki ama mwezi mmoja mbili hivi uh, one month uh, see you uh, july tutafungua hiyo station ya Mariakani uh, the challenge in Mombasa uh, honorable members is the fact that most generation is happening out of Mombasa and we are transporting power to Mombasa. And the only heavy generation, particularly coming out of Malindi, ni ile ya jua. Na unajua, jua ikipotea kidogo, uh, inaanguka. Iki, ikirudi, inaamuka. But what we are doing to the challenges, uh, challenges of uh, intermittence, we are trying to stabilize that power ili kwamba uh, to Akikisha Kwamba, Mombasa is well served. Mombasa is well served. Senator uh, Abdul Had, what's your point of order? Thank you. Thank you, Bona. Asante Sana, Bona Speaker. Waziri Kidoga and Anichanganya. Anonge Kiswahili, Mara and Abadisho Kizungu. So in a Kongumu Ku, Fata Manunaki, Siachagu Moja, Akai Koluga Moja, Kalain Moja, the Fadali. Asante Speaker. Yes. Uh, uh, Senator Haji is concerned, and I believe. <laughs> so, uh, honourable members, like I said, the challenge in Mombasa is the fact that most of the generation up happens out of the region. We transport the power to Mombasa. What happens in Malindi or the generation out of Weru in Malindi, the solar power plant? You know, most of the renewable plants like wind and solar. Uh, are associated with intermittence. Intermittence uh, is to say, when there is wind, and wind is very good at night, you do very good generation. And when there is no wind, you have to have a replacement to take over and supply the energy, uh, similar to solar. And whereas we support Mombasa majorly with diesel generation, we have built a line, 400 kV line, uh, between uh, Olkaria, through to Isinya, Isinya, Mariakani, and that will service Mombasa adequately with almost 100% uh, renewable energy. Mariakani is being commissioned in July. And um, because I'm here with my team, Honorable Faki, or Honorable Members, uh, we've had the challenge during the month of Ramadan. We'll possibly want to do more of what we are doing in Arok Bomet to ensure that uh, there is no overload or constraint in the transmission systems. 
uh, which occasionally there is, because we are also building a line between Malindi, uh, Malindi, uh, Weru, Kilifi. The funding is available together with the Narok Bomet from, um, from Korea, South Korea, and Africa Development Bank. In fact, we have already gone to tender on the one for Narok Bomet. With that funding, there is so much happening in Mombasa. We recognize Mombasa as an important city, not only uh, during such holy months of Ramadan, but as the gateway, uh, water gateway, not only to Kenya, but to the East Africa region. From the earlier meeting where we uh, today uh, gave the National Treasury a check of five billion on, uh, on account of the profits made by Kenya uh, pipeline, we were talking to how do we service the region better using our gateway and play that competitive advantage so that that advantage does not go to our neighbors down Dar es Salaam and so on and so forth. So, Honorable Faki, uh, we are paying a lot of attention to Mombasa, the kind of investment coming to the region in transmission, uh, power generation, looking at um, uh, Dongokundu, where we are going to take a T line, which is there's already funding from JICA to, to, to Dongokundu, and the kind of infrastructural support, not just because of Mombasa, but to make Mombasa service the all of East Coast of Africa. Uh, is going to be significant. And so we just beg for your support uh, as we walk the journey together to address these challenges, which may not be quite finished win during the month of Ramadan. But I want to really beg on my colleagues to ensure that uh, what we talk about in, in terms of managing the grid so that we don't have those uh, uh, small outages given the kind of temperatures and the lifestyle where every household needs air conditioning uh, and the discomfort during the month of Ramadan is addressed. Uh, thank you. Uh, Senator Abbas Sheikh Mohammed. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I wish to ask the, the CS. First and foremost, I want to thank the CS for the First time Mojia is actually, for the time of Ramadan, is getting uh, power supply. Thank you for that. Uh, having said that, Honorable uh, uh, CS, uh, the municipality of Mojia Township actually is expanding, and the machines are getting very old, and it's emitting a lot of uh, heavy, heavy uh, emissions and fumes of. Uh, and this, uh, that is causing a lot of pollution. So I don't know what measures uh, can be put in place. Because that, now, that machine now, uh, the, the, the station now is actually, in my, I mean, surrounded by uh, settlements, and the pollution is just too high. I want you to at least do something if it can be done. Two honorable uh, Senator um, CS, there was a plan for five megawatts solar for Wajia. I don't know where that plan has gone. We are looking, uh, anxiously waiting for it. I want to know the situation. And what plan do you have for Wajia? Now that I can hear my colleague here, he's almost getting benefited from, uh, from the wind power. So I think uh, you should also divert this uh, wind, uh, wind, mill, uh, wind power to Wajia because it's actually even shorter than taking it back to uh, like Susu and all this and Amor Navasha. So what is the plan for Wajia actually? So for, to have uh, to be at the part of the national grid. Otherwise, as it is, the, 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 the county is growing. Uh, we are under, uh, already experiencing, you know, uh, upcoming of uh, cottages. Abbas, you've asked your question. Honorable Sias, uh, if you could respond. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Abbas. Uh, and, uh, Honorable members, as regarding plans we have for Wajia being majorly supported through the COSAP or Kenya off-grid uh, solar system, we've got funding from, uh, there is a retiring uh, OECD funding from Poland, which we are pitching for. We've signed an, 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 an MOU for that fund of 200 million US dollar to come to Kenya. Uh, to support in the development of areas like uh, Wajia. And 
uh, I think we will be, we are ready as Kenya and we've submitted that document to the other side. I think we should be signing before end of April uh, to, to draw that funding. A lot of that funding will support uh, the off-grid systems, but more importantly, uh, members, uh, we are looking at how to connect Garissa on grid to Ajia. How to, there's, there's also uh, a program of hybridization where Ajia is currently served fully uh, or 100% uh, by thermal generation, uh, diesel generator. What we are doing is putting in a solar plant which can run during the day, and if there was intermittence, then the, the batteries will be there to support, and uh, the diesel engine can only come on if the solar is challenged uh, when the batteries are, are not running enough. We did a similar project uh, in, we are doing similar projects in seven counties, one which we have commissioned and the president participated in the commissioning is Wasini, Wasini in Lungalunga, where we have the solar plant, and if the solar is not there, the batteries can run for three days, and if the solar, the batteries went down, only then the diesel engine comes on. So with those kind of solution, we are evaluating even for counties like uh, Turkana, how we can move whether we should move on grid to Turkana from, um, from Lokscha to Turkana, or do we do an off grid, which is fairly solid, and where a solar plant or a wind plant can run, and if, because of intermittence, the battery system can support for three days, and uh, otherwise a diesel generator can come. This is in line with the Kenya commitment to 2030, 100% green energy. And therefore, when we talk at 2024 today to 2030, that we need to switch off all those diesel engines. We should be seeing some of the pronouncements I'm making, uh, honorable members, coming into fruition in 26, 27, 28. So we'll continue to work together, but this hybrid system, solar system, that uh, should really run all the time supported by batteries, and we only fall back to diesel, will actually remove some of those intermittents that we even see today. Uh, because with battery uh, being a good uh, form of storage of power, we should be able to... But again, uh, Honorable Chute, Honorable Apas, the way you have been to my office a few times, we can look at the details of these programs for those off-grid areas and what we are doing together uh, to support our country. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Sias, uh, Senator Ogola Beatrice. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, my question is on a statement that I made last year in May uh, to the um, uh, ministry, but uh, relevant to the question today on faulty transformers. In my question, Honorable Speaker, I'd ask that the ministry list a number of uh, faulty transformers in Homer Bay County and provide timelines within which the transformers would be replaced. And precisely, Honorable Speaker, uh, the response came in time uh, the same month from the ministry, which I appreciate so much. And in the response, Honorable Speaker, the CS had given uh, a list of transformers, uh, 83 in 84 in number, that were uh, faulty and went ahead to give two lists. One list has 21 transformers that would be replaced by REREC by the 31st of July, 2023, and another list was given of 63 faulty transformers that would be replaced by KPLC by the 31st of July, 2023. Now my question to the CS is, is the CS aware that the commitment that was made by the ministry uh, to my response has not been re uh, honored and I would like to know why and when that would be honored. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable CS, could you respond to the question? Uh, thank you, uh, Speaker. Thank you, Beatrice, for that. Uh, let me, let me, let me, uh, allow me, Chair, because this is a, a very detailed uh, 
a question with 21 Transformer 63 with KPLC. And uh, KPLC is here with me through the CEO, uh, Dr. Siror. Um, I think the challenge in Homer Bay, sometimes when we say the challenge in Bomet, is the transit to Homer Bay, because most of the power that comes to that region uh, comes through Bomet, uh, Kisi, through Kegati, uh, Homer Bay, Awendo. And, and uh, it's not only a transformer challenge that we are facing in that region, it, it is compounded by the constraint, transmission constraint, uh, and therefore with the power outage, the transformer challenge, the load shedding that I talked about earlier on uh, impacts in that area heavily. So, Chair, I want to beg to be allowed with the KPLC CEO who is sitting here. Rerek gave an apology. The lady, Dr. Rose Mukalama, the CEO for Rerek, was supposed to be here with us, but she's attending to something outside Nairobi today. Uh, to address this 21 and 63, and like I said, we are in a procurement circle of so many transformers. If KPLC was to stand and respond on my behalf, they, they will say as soon as these transformers are delivered, we'll address a number of transformers, not only in Homa Bay, but in the country in terms of replacement. But we also have really need some public awareness and support in terms of the abuse that goes to the transformers. We can bring in a new transformer today, but as we take part of the rural areas, and because we have our TTIs and we have trained our people, they have learned to sometimes uh, illegally do illegal connections, which are not dimension, and they overdraw power from the transformer. You can burn the coil and therefore lose a transformer. A transformer today runs for anything up to a million shillings, two million shillings, depending on the, on the kilowatt uh, rating of that transformer. So the important thing is to ensure that also that Customers connected to the transformer are legitimately connected and they are paying their bills so that they don't take shortcuts and burn a transformer that we could blame on quality of the transformer and yet it is our culture of wanting to use free power uh, for that purpose. Uh, but allow, 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 allow us, uh, Speaker Beatrice, to uh, respond substantively, possibly because of a specific question impacting on Homer Bay to deal with you directly to address what we promised. And like I said, there's a transformer procurement circle which is uh, just closed. How much can KPLC pick up and correct? I'm sure of the 63, some have been addressed. But any that has not been addressed, not only for Omar Bay, but for the whole country, we allow us to address that, but to respond more specifically to the question of the 21 transformers and uh, Eric and 63 for KPLC. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Sias, uh, Senator uh, Abdul Haji. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, let me first take this opportunity to thank the minister for appearing today and answering the questions of the members, which um, in reality are questions from the public. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, I would ideally be asking the minister uh, in relation to the frequent power outage um, in Garissa, but I, I will not ask him that question because um, it's already been asked by the uh, senator from Mombasa and Wajir, and it's been addressed. So I would not want him to, to repeat. Uh, but Mr. Speaker, my question I want, uh, was touching on the issue of transformers. Um, the Waziri has explained to us here that they are expecting uh, they've made some procurement, um, and uh, for a long period of time in Kenya, we've, we've, we've been told that the problem with uh, Kenya power and lighting is usually transformers. So my question, Bwana um, Waziri, I just want to inquire on whether or not if we have any local manufacturers uh, for transformers in Kenya, and if we have local manufacturers is the ministry and Kenya Power and Lighting procuring from the local manufacturers? If we don't have any local manufacturers for transformers, what is the ministry doing to talk to local investors to give them incentives to set up manufacturing plants for transformers 
um, so that we can stop relying on uh, brokers and agents of foreign um, uh, transformer manufacturers who bring us substandard products from time to time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Thank you, Senator uh, Haji. Honorable Sears respond, and particularly in line with the second limp of the question, because you've responded to the aspect on the transformers and uh, the power outages. Uh, thank you again, Speaker. Thank you, uh, Senator Haji. And uh, we'll do our best during this holy month of Ramadan to sustain uh, those areas uh, because of uh, the kind of lifestyle during the month of Ramadan to make sure that people are comfortable, the, the air conditioning in our homes are, are working and so on and so forth. And like I said, again, I'm here with the uh, CEO for Kenya Power. Uh, we are listening and we will act on that. Uh, we have got local transformer manufacturers and I think today, honorable members, the requirements for importing transformers uh, into the country are so difficult uh, against local manufacturers. In fact, all local, all transformers come out of local manufacturing. Um, I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know how much local it is in terms of assembly and manufacturing because you know transformer would be a coiling. We may not manufacture copper so uh, the question of how much is uh, raw materials manufactured and how much is assembly. But the point today is all transformers that come into the Kenyan market are locally manufactured, particularly uh, up to a certain kilowatt rating. The big ones that we may not have capacity come from outside, um, and we are building capacity for the local industry to be able to do that. Uh, we've got a very stringent inspection and certification process, and Kenya Power do work with the local manufactured transformer companies uh, to ensure that uh, we support them in this endeavor, and therefore localize, create jobs for our industry. But the point, Mwishimiwa, is it would be difficult of 100 new transformers coming into the Kenya market you may not get five imported transformers. It is basically locally manufactured. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, Sias. Senator Aaron Turia. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, first I want to congratulate the minister and his team for a job well done in uh, first responding to questions that have been raised by members and also the leadership that they are providing to the ministry, listening to the answers. Uh, Mr. Speaker, if the minister can commit and assure us that the plans as he has laid out this afternoon before the House will be delivered, then uh, we're in a good place, and I want to appreciate what they're doing as a team at the ministry. I have one question, Mr. Speaker. When, uh, when the minister was responding, Speaker, he mentioned the desire by GOK to move to 100% green energy by 2030 and the plans uh, that that entails. I am aware, Mr. Speaker, because previously in my life in this house, I served as a member of the Energy Committee, uh, Mr. Speaker, that there are many uh, people that you can call tenderpreneurs, for lack of a better word, who are still holding around, either in Kenya or in the uh, famous capitals of the world, uh, exploration licenses for geothermal which can help us as a country uh, to access those sites, uh, Mr. Speaker, and be able to bring on shore uh, cheap and affordable power as opposed to the old, uh, old uh, generated power, some of which he has mentioned, like the diesel power. When is his ministry going to take decisions against such uh, business people so that we, um, we are able to enjoy cheaper power? Because that was a key promise that this administration made to the people of Kenya, yet that is yet to be fulfilled, uh, Mr. Speaker. Finally, Speaker, and this is of interest to you, so even if you want to throw me out, uh, it is your people of Bomet who will uh, benefit just like my people, and that's not a bribe to you. Can the minister confirm to the House when will they uh, commence the construction of this uh, Narok Bomet line that will affect all of us that are in the western part of the country to stop this uh, quasi-lead shoddy 
shedding that we continue to see each and every other day. The president made a pronouncement recently in his tour of Bomet, but we want to know when will works commence. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Robert, yes. Respond to the two questions. Ordinarily, uh, you ought to have asked one supplementary question, but I exercise the discretion understanding order number one. So, Honorable Sias, proceed to respond to the two questions by the majority leader. Uh, thank you, uh, Senate Majority Leader, for uh, raising what is very important for this country and for the world at large to pitch our country as a renewable, a green, renewable energy uh, country. There will be, shortly be premium on green, uh, green steel, green, uh, green everything in terms of manufacturing because uh, it supports and addresses the challenges which mitigation on climate change would otherwise be so expensive. Like what we've seen in the very regular rain, rainfall patterns, <clears throat> the temperatures that we, we feel today when it should be sometimes the coldest time of the year, it's very warm and uh, causing really difficult patterns on even how we do our farming. Uh, that commitment of 100% renewable by 2030 is a commitment that has been made at all levels. And uh, Speaker, Honorable Members, as you are aware, we are today 93% in terms of energy mix renewable. And the 7% is basically the power that we get out of, out of uh, heavy fuel for picking. We don't have a coal plant. We don't have, a, uh, we don't have any, any fossil fuel except for, in, for picking in the evening when there is a certain surge of power demand when industry is working and we light our homes in the evening. And that is only for four hours. But the rest of the hours in the, in the day, we run uh, renewable, except for what I said, we need to expire some of the uh, diesel generations in the coast region. But like I said, like has been mentioned uh, by uh, Senator Cheruyot, the 